Hey, it is Cody from the Keepers Nerve. How y'all doing? Uh, you are right here at my uh, painting table for my Warhammer 40k, and I thought today would be a great day to just talk about a wonderful little box board game that's uh, really, it's a card game, board game, kind of the mix thereof, and it is called Welcome to the Dungeon. And I also have the, the sequel, which is also the, uh, it's an expansion, but also can be played separate from the original of Welcome Back to the Dungeon. And they are both great games. I usually play this one only because when I get a hold of it, it's often people that I haven't played with before because just haven't had a chance to or somebody new. So it's easier to play with the basic expand or the basic game. Now, I want to explain this game, why it's so fun. This is like a $15, $20 game, really small, really cheap, and so much fun. Uh, they say on the box 10 plus, but honestly, you could play it with younger. They may not understand everything going on, but at the same time, they will have fun because they'll see the monsters and the pretty colors and stuff. So in this game, how you win is you either go into the dungeon twice and survive, so you kill all the monsters, or how you win is this. Super simple. Be the last one standing. The only one left that's not dead. So in this game, you have hit points. So this card, okay, serves two purposes. One, it's hit points, but it's also a cheat sheet for monsters. So the first thing it's doing is the white side says you're full health, Red side says you have taken damage, and when you have to take the card away, it means you are dead. So you have essentially two hit points. And so if you go into the dungeon and fail twice, you will die. You're done. But this is also a cheat sheet of how many monsters are in the deck, as well as their strengths. So right here you have two level one power little uh, goblins, right? And then it just keeps going. And like down there, two level four vampires and so then you get over here and you have the lich the demon and the, the dragon so stuff like this where it's just super super uh simple game there's only this many cards in the original games deck the expansion has a few extra cards which is a lot of fun but that's how it works is you're going into a dungeon with those monsters dallas here's a catch though not necessarily all of those monsters. You could have more, well, not more, but you could have a lot less than that. You could go in a dungeon with two cards. It's possible. You could go into a dungeon technically with one card. It would be highly unlikely, but it's possible. And so everybody is going into this dungeon at some point unless they just chicken out and let everybody else go. But on a given turn of the game, only one person will go in, and the person that goes in is equipped as a certain character. And that's the one thing that's really hard to explain to people, and it's easier just to play the game than show it. Because once you play, you're like, oh, this is stupid easy. Like, yes, it is. And what it is, is everybody is the same character, and you're just playing the game of who's going into the dungeon and who's chickening out. And so, example. In the base game, there are four different characters that you can, you play with each round, and you choose one of those characters. And whoever goes into the dungeon will be that character for the turn. So usually, the game will start with the the knight or the warrior. Okay, essentially a knight, but it's the warrior. All right, he has three hit points, and he is equipped di with different items as well. He's equipped with plate armor, which is five hit points. He's equipped with the knight shield for three. He's then equipped with some things that are more specific. The Dragon Spear. It defeats the dragon. So when the dragon, the nine power creature, shows up, he insta-kills it if he has this equipped. He also is equipped with the torch. Defeats monsters with strength three or less. So any of those monsters on that sheet that are come into the deck, or into the dungeon, that have one, two, or three power, as long as you have this torch, they, they run away and you defeat them immediately. It's essentially like you don't even fight them because they just don't show up. You also have the Holy Grail, defeat monsters with even numbered strength. Now, this is a really powerful one because, you know, it can, you have a bit of overlap with the two power with the torch. So that's already covered. But the fours and the sixes, but you'll notice there's a seven and nine, but not an eight. Like that's on purpose because then they're giving you a little less that it covers. And so the last one, and this is very interesting and it makes for an interesting decision. It's the Vorpal Sword. Defeat one monster that you choose before entering into the dungeon. And one note for this, as far as rules, is that if you choose one of the monsters that are duplicates, it does defeat both, even though the wording doesn't sound like it. What it's saying is you pick a number, a power of monster, and then you kill that monster. And so 
this is important to note for everything. Like, these are the things that will change how the game plays. Now, here's the monster deck, okay? And so, what you've got here is a monster card, right? Here's your three power. Now, on your turn, you're going to do one of a couple things. First off, you can just pass. As long as you're not the very first person to go, you can pass your turn. When you pass your turn, you're saying, I am not confident in going into the dungeon. I am scared of it. I am going to let that be for someone else. And then for the rest of that game round, you are out. You do nothing. Okay? So it's the interesting thing is, who goes into the dungeon if everybody passes? The answer is, whoever doesn't pass ends up in the dungeon. So you play with four people right around the table. This guy passes. She passes. They go, mm, I pass. And it gets to you. You want to pass, but unfortunately, you're the only one left. You're going in. So that's something to keep in mind. Uh, do, do, do. Now, you know, the other thing is this. The next part on your turn. You can go, you know what? I'm not going to pass. So what you have to do is you must take a card. You take a card. You do not show it to anyone else. You yourself look at it, and then you do one of two things with it. And this is where the game gets really fun. You either put it into the dungeon, what, a pile of cards that you've decided is the dungeon. The lowest card in the dungeon will be the last card turned over. So the more cards are put on, just keep in mind, that's the order. It's the topmost card is the first monster that you will fight. So just keep that in mind. And then you, you can... you put it in the dungeon, right? Or, here's where it's fun. Instead of putting it in the dungeon, you can go, hmm, I don't really like this card, or you just want to mess with people. You can set the card aside next to your, your part of the table, and then you can take an item off of the character, in this case, our warrior. You can't take the warrior himself, but you can take an item off of him and put it on this. It's not that you're equipping it. What you're doing is saying, I'm going to take this away from our creature, from our character. And we also won't fight this monster. And so it's it's an interesting game. So say you did. You drew the dragon. Well, you could take the dragon spear. And people are like, well, you, that's probably the dragon underneath there. And now we don't need it. And it's also gone. But what if, what if this was this little card? The four power vampire. And you take it and you set it off to the side. And you go, I'm taking that dragon spear. And I'm sitting over here. Some people might think. Oh, that's probably the dragon, and he's just messing with us. And some people might be going, is he messing with us, or is this real? Like, is that actually the dragon, or is it something else, and he's just wanting to make us think it is, and that we're safe, and the dragon's going to still show up? And that's where the game goes to a game of chicken. It is, as I like to, and I, as I was told this game and described it, it is a game of chicken for nerds, and it's fantastic in that. And so the base game comes with four champions that you can play around with. The Barbarian, the Rogue, the Warrior, and is it the Wizard? Mage, just Mage, generic. And so uh, great, great things. And these, these characters do different things. They function differently. So, for example, uh, you know what? Let's just show the Rogue. The Mage is one of my favorites. Even with the expansion, it's still one of my favorites, but it's a little complicated because it's just different. But the rogue is a fantastic character. So the rogue starts with three hit points as well. Has a buckler for three hit points. So there you go. And then its other piece of item is mithril armor. Okay, so think like elf is what we're looking at right here. But here's where it gets really fun is it's got some shenanigans stuff so invisibility cloak defeat monsters with strength six or more so it's actually protected against the big stuff and then the vorpal dagger just like the vorpal sword defeat one monster that you choose before entering the dungeon and again you can defeat duplicates if you choose those so if you have the invisibility cloak so you get six and up then you can choose something smaller because you're already protected against the really big things now Healing Potion. Two of the characters in the base game start with this. When you die, you come back to life with your adventurer's HP once per dungeon. I believe you only come back with your adventurer's HP. Not 100% sure on that. So you might have to look up rulings on that as well. But it's a it's a fantastic thing because it allows you... Say you get hit by a two-power minion from, and you're at three hit points, you're down to one, and then the dragon comes up. 
you get hit for nine and you die, but if you have the healing potion, you come back with your three hit points. So the rest of that nine power, just gone. It's a way to absorb a damage that you shouldn't be able to take. And so it's it's stuff like that. You know, and granted, the dragon could only hit you for nine if you didn't have the invisibility cloak. So these are fun things. But then there's also this shenanigan. The rogue's a funny one because you can't just guarantee a win with the rogue. But if the timing is right for the cards, like they come in a certain order, you can do some crazy things. The warrior, if it has everything equipped to it at the end of the game, you can beat an entire dungeon. You are that strong because of the items given to you. Really, really cool. So this is the last one for the rogue, for example. Defeat monsters with strength two or less. And add their total strength to your HP. So the ones and twos in the deck, which there are four possible cards that can show up, you get that health back. And so that is fantastic for healing, especially if they come up early, they can give you some extra hit points to take a few extra shots. So uh, this game is fantastic. And we won't go into Welcome Back to the Dungeon other than the character classes are the Bard, uh, Necromancer, a ninja and a princess and a princess is by far the princess and the bard are the, the most fun at, in this box the ninja is kind of boring and the the necromancer is kind of interesting too but the bard and the princess are just princess is funny because of the cards she comes with but the bard is crazy strong if you play it right but he's a little complicated and so overall this game super super fun great game that you can play in 30 minutes or less and it's hilarious shenanigans. So I highly recommend this game. Go pick it up if, at your local comic book or <laughs> comic book gaming store and or order it online, you know? So uh, what's down in the comments? I'd love to hear. What is your favorite random short little card or board game that gets people in the door of nerddom, right? That's Sometimes that's the goal, isn't it? Of getting people in the door to nerdy things. And games like this are perfect for it because it doesn't take a whole lot of thought process. It's it's simple and it gets people in the door. So I wanna know, what's your, what's your stuff? What's your comments down below for great games? Cause I'd love to hear some other options and potentially buy those too. Anyway, I've been Cody from the Keepers of Nerddom. Have a good one. Bye y'all.